What's up, everybody? Hopefully that's better. <laughs> Let me get that music off here. Much as I love the music. Hopefully that is better. I was having, I'm having a crazy camera issue. Hopefully it doesn't keep coming back. I am back. It's better. Hopefully it's better. You can hear me. Let me know if you can hear me. Okay. No guests on right now to say I can hear you. So there's that. Perfect. Well, uh, we are going to check out the Sovol SV06 printer. Uh, Sovol has been awesome to me and the channel. I've had uh, a few printers ever since the Sovol SV01, which I really liked. I want to throw it out there. I really did like that. Um, good audio. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jack, in the shop. Um, so I, <laughs> I scheduled this because I got back from Earth. Um, we did the um monday stream and i was exhausted and i scheduled it for today to give myself a little bit of time to get stuff set back up so we got this camera today i think we got an overhead camera which will be awesome and uh all of a sudden i see everybody stream this this uh printer today so there's that um that's okay though i don't mind sharing the stream with everybody because this printer just released, I believe, Monday. So brand new on the Sovo lineup. It's the SV06. We're not going to mess around too much. We're going to get this thing set up and rock and roll. I'm going to pop my chat. I'm going to pop this up full screen. Oh, you know what? Let me turn off that banner first. There we go. Go to comments. I bought one of these during the pre-sale. Excited to see this live stream. Awesome. Um, Zach Russell, there you go. I did buy one for 199 bucks. Yes, they had an early, early bird, I think Monday, for $199. Let's see, if I pop this open, do I still see your comments? Um, let's see, it says new chats will appear in the corner. Someone chat real quick. Let me just see. I, I popped myself full screen so I could kind of see what's going on. And I want to make sure <laughs> maybe I can... I can see the chats. Um, I don't see them yet. But, oh, wait, wait. No, that's not it. Here's what I'm going to do real quick because I don't want to mess around. I'm going to jump in. I'm going to grab my YouTube chats. Uh, pause. Pop out chat. Drop that on another screen. Boom. I'm going to drop this back here. Basically, I'm just moving some stuff around. Top chat. Chat it up. Let me know if you're in the chat, if you were at Earth, and if you met me at Earth, or met any of the awesome people that were there. Everybody was so cool. I, it was such a fun time. Um, all right. There we go. I got, I got my situation set up here. I'm going to move this keyboard and mouse. Let's get this thing rocking. It's the SV06 by Sovol. Just released on Monday. Uh, you probably saw two or three other streams um, today. So there's that. How big is your studio? Um, let's see. My studio is roughly 600 square feet in this in this part. So I have uh, uh, two rooms. Maybe I'll do a studio tour one of these days. I have two rooms. Um, this room that we're in which this set is on, uh, on the other side of this room, you, when you watch hot makes on Monday nights at 6 PM, that's where I sit. And this is the background of that set. And then I have another room, uh, kind of attached, but this way that is really long and it has all the printers and stuff like that in there. Actually, my, one of my bamboo X one carbons is, is rocking and rolling right now. I can hear it. Luckily it's in there because it's loud. Um, so yeah, Glenn, I was at Earth, saw you, but you were busy. I spent a bunch of time hanging out at the Railcore booth watching Chase's super hopped up Railcore Mini. Glenn, man, that thing was nuts. And I tell you, the harness he made for that thing, mwah, gold, man, gold. Um, we were talking to him and um, he was saying he just got it printing like that the day, I think it was Friday morning or something like that. And that thing was gorgeous, gorgeous tripod. 
Tripods Garage is here. John, how you doing? Um, yes, it was just beautiful. All right, let's pop this bad boy open. This is the uh, 14th stream of the day for the Sovel SV06. Hopefully, if you watch the other ones, you know what's coming. I did not watch any of the other streams today. Not any of them. Uh, wow, look at this. A lot of stuff on the top here. We have a user's manual. Um, we'd love to hear you, or we'd love to hear from you. So there's a little thing where you can chat them. And a leveling guide. Look at that. So I did get a message since I got this so early. Uh, they need to make sure they sent me some messages saying I, I need to update the firmware before I do anything after I get it built. So we'll do that right away. Uh, my third stream of the day. Like I said, I didn't watch anything. I just didn't I didn't watch anything today on this at all. So I didn't want to be tainted. <laughs> Looks like I have no idea what this thing's gonna do or deliver. Uh, that was a screen. Got a little box up here. Uh, still needs tuning. Yes, that thing was absolutely crazy. I I loved it. Um, and it was fast. It was it was awesome. That little rail core was a beast. All right, so let me just whoop. I'm throwing stuff here. Whoop. So inside here, we got more stuff. Uh, this appears to be stuff. Uh, let's see. Hey, Chris. Chris Kersey's in the house. Chris, how you doing? You did a stream last night. Great job on that. That was the new BQ whatever. I forgot <laughs> which one it was. What is this? Oh, there you go. There's there's that. Interesting. That must be our little control box. Ooh, bubble wrap. There we go. Uh, Paul Cumber, how you doing? I was streaming a print while Joel's stream. Nice watching Joel's stream. Nom Fom's in the house. Stuffed Sam Prentiss full pancakes before dropping them off at the airport. I saw that. I'm kind of um, I'm kind of jealous. I love pancakes, so I wish I was there. We had a lot of fun at Earth though. So this is your hot end. Hey, look at this. There's a screw floating. I don't know if you could see that. So we might have to figure out where that goes. I'm going to put that off to the side, and hopefully I don't forget about it. Put this right over here. Um, see, CD makes stuff. I was there fixing, helping you fix your racer. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, ask Jim. <laughs> um I, I would love to have some pancakes. Pancakes are awesome. So here is the power supply. Um, it says power supply. It looks like it's 24 volt. Uh, it is a 24 volt. We might as well look at it right now. On this side, uh, it's kind of hard to see. Let's see, maybe. I need to get a top-down light. But anyways, right there is our little switch. I'm going to switch it right away so I don't forget. Um, let me just grab a, it didn't get anything out yet for this because I was going to use the tools that came with it, but I don't want to forget. So there we go. Uh, just switched it right here to the 115 side. If you can see that, probably not. Let's keep moving and set that aside. I'm looking for any other screws. Um, I saw it fall in there. Fixing racers, been there. Ha, <laughs> yes, you have. Your own when you did a wheelie and broke it. Ooh, <laughs> that was so much fun. I got to admit, uh, broken or not, uh, the the Death Racers stuff was just, it was a blast. I literally spent most of the weekend doing that. And then I realized on Sunday I needed to film some stuff. So I run around and filmed a bunch of stuff. Um, <laughs> BD is electric, or electric. Yeah, I haven't watched anything. I 100% honest, I have not watched anything on this printer. I saw a bunch of videos come out in the last couple of days and some live streams. So there is the base. I got to say right away, that's tiny. I mean, you can see hand for scale. That's a tiny base. I'm kind of digging that. I'm kind of digging that. I'm going to set that off to the side. Just make sure we don't have anything. Hey, there's another little screw. I found it right there don't know what it is but it's there uh there is something on this side under here there's your extruder just like that it does interesting touchless 
Um, see if I can show you this. This right here, it's like a touchless um, auto leveling, kind of like an easy ABL, but not, but not. Interesting. Uh, nothing else in here, nothing else in here. It doesn't look like there's anything else in this box. Let's fold this bad boy up. Pumpkin, hopefully I don't hit my camera when I toss. The Pumpkin King will be back to behead you all. <laughs> ah, you're Pumpkin King. Okay. Now I know who you are. You, I tell you what, uh, he had an amazing, amazing death racer, uh, complete with a coffin carrying case. If you have not seen this, you need to check out uh, the Death Racers group on Facebook. I think it's like Death Racers Builders Group. Otherwise, there's going to be a bunch of footage coming. Um, but, I mean, absolutely, absolutely amazing. Uh, some of these guys and gals put in a ton of time on their racers. So, also from the group that set one on fire. I'm just going to throw it out there. You smoked your harness trying to fix another one, and it was pretty awesome. <laughs> uh let's see all right let's pull out the manual i got two little tiny screws over here who knows what they go for but i am really digging the size of this um i'm not even joking i i love that this is kind of compact it's not huge it's not a giant base now they probably could have still put the power supply and stuff underneath and made it um you know made it that way but i see what they're doing here the power supply is going to sit on the back like the Ender 3, I'm assuming, um, and it'll be awesome. So, yes, tripod's right. Absolutely amazing. All right, let's, let's get rocking. We're 15 minutes in. It's already out of the box. We're going for a record tonight because there were 17 streams today already. And uh, I just want to get this thing built. I want to get it built and printing so we can talk, you know. Nice to meet you at Earth, Boris. You too. It was awesome. So many, so many awesome people at Earth. Thank you guys so much for being there uh, and saying hi. And if you were there racing, if you were, if you got a death racer, uh, you know, I did win the first uh, first day. Uh, so Nana Nana Boo Boo tripod. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, I did win the first day. That was a lot of fun. And then, um, you know, with the help of CD CDs make stuff, and I think it's. CDs make stuff, yeah. Um, and another group, uh, everything came back together. We figured out what broke. We fixed it, and we were back for Sunday. And then I got taken out in like 10 seconds on Sunday. So, <laughs> you know, it is what it is. Uh, so this printer has bells and whistles with a smaller bed. I don't think it's that much smaller. It's 235 by 235 on the build plate here. It is a uh, textured PEI texture kind of build plate with a spring steel sheet and it's printed right on so um you know 235 by 235 is the same as you know classic ender 3 or uh you know i believe the ender 3s1 is this size so let's do this uh install the gantry using a 50 mil m5 by 50s speaking of m5 by 50s or 50 mils m3 by 50 is what i had to use to fix my racer. <laughs> Looks like Caprucia and an Ender had a baby. It might be. This is dual. Um, one of the cool things that I see. So now this is awesome. How often do you get one of these little sweet spatulas? Huh? Gold. Gold. Sorry. <laughs> Not going to lie. These are awesome. I love them. Um, let's see. It does kind of look like an Ender and a Prusia had a baby. Prusha was there. I had fun. Uh, we talked to him on um, uh, over the weekend. May have up, may have frustrated him a little bit, but I'm okay with that. Um, Jerry, how you doing? Just saw your chat. Chris Log has a cousin. I'm not sure what that means, but I'll just go with it. And I just dumped out a whole bunch of stuff, and it looks like the 50 mils, and they also have little lock washer um bolts looks like they are going to bolt in from the side um and that's what the instructions say as well let me grab my t-handles y'all know if you watched my channel long enough that i absolutely love these t-handles in the description is a uh, amazon amazon group 
<laughs> I can't even talk, an Amazon link, and these T-handles are in there. These things are awesome. Um, they are, I, I just love them. They make things so much faster. Hi from New Zealand. Hi. Chris Riley's log printer has a cousin. <laughs> yes. Now I get what you're saying. Speaking of Chris Riley, he had an amazing candy machine. Uh, one of the candy claw machines where it came down and grabbed it and picked it up full of benchies and candy. He uh, made it himself using 3D printer parts and Marlin. And it was phenomenal. Phenomenal. Okay. That was for Sam. Phenomenal. Uh, we're going forward. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to rock and roll and just put this thing together. Um, it sits down like this. There are grooves in the side of the frame here that this sits in. So I'm going to bring this close to me. And don't forget to add your little lock washers to the bolts. Um, now old version of Kira is under extruding. Also, <laughs> world's, world's best award winning. Yes, Mark. Absolutely. Um, this is the... It's got to be the world, or the world's best, or award-winning, or any of that stuff. An Oreo claw machine would be—it would be awesome. I almost said something I shouldn't say on the air. On the air it would be awesome. I should do that. I should ask Chris for the plans for that thing. I'm telling you, that was—if you watched Hot Makes on Monday, we had Joe from uh, Makes and Breaks or 3D Maker Noob on the show. Um, I. And I told him that was my favorite machine of the whole show. There was some awesome stuff. There was a, there was an amazing machine. Uh, There's multiple amazing, amazing machines, but that one was my favorite. I did not tighten those all the way because I want to get this side in first, just so you know. So I'm going to speed that around. I slowed my speed down and that didn't help. Um, anyone with using Kira 5.2? Is it under extruding? I was using 5.0, everything's good. 5.2 starts under extruding with a with a four nozzle. Um, look, I, I'm gonna be 100% honest, I don't use Kira. So if anyone can help him, jump in there. Um, let's see, world, yeah. Oreo claw machine, great. Um, even up to my skin overlap. That sounds pretty awesome to say out loud. Um, hey, what's the footprint measurements of the machine? Just want to know how much space it'll take up. Give me just a couple minutes. We'll find out here. I'm, I'm all about that. So here's the thing. I love the footprint so far. I don't know if you can tell, but this thing has a tiny footprint. And <laughs> I love it. Let me just see. Does it tell me in here? Otherwise, I'll measure it. All right, here we go. The print size, <laughs> this manual says 220, 220 by 250, but the, the bed, it's printed literally on the flex plate here, and it says 235. Just like the original Ender 3s, it says 220, but uh, everyone modified it to 235, and it printed just fine. Um, I don't see a, a measurement, but I'm going to get that for you uh, in a minute here. Let me give me give me five minutes. Let me put the rest of this together, and then I'll get you that measurement. Because I don't know if you can tell this right now, but the footprint is just—it's awesome. It's tiny. I imagine this is going to come back a little, but that's nothing. You know. Let me just make sure I get this other side. Chris said the plans will be available via his GitHub. I hope so because I think I need to make it. He he spent a ton of time on that thing now. Um, he said one of the hardest things was to, was to home an extruder because the extruder had to drop down. He had to home it. It was, it's, it was ridiculous. All right. Um, no problem. Uh, new install of India's and Kira. Let's see. Everyone is streaming this printer today. Yes, we are. <laughs> I don't think any of us knew that was happening, but we all are doing it. So surprise. All right, what do we got here? We assembled it. This is what we look like so far. And this is, I love, I love this footprint. I love it. <laughs> call me, call me weird, but this footprint looks, it's just, um, it's small, 
it's compact and it, it looks cool. All right. That's backwards. Rods face the front. Do they? Well, shit. I mean, darn it. You're absolutely correct. I did put it on backwards. Oh, that's that's definitely going to slow my stream down. Thank you for noticing that right away. I'm, I'm <laughs> too busy talking here. Talking, talking, talking. Ender 3 V2 is a pretty solid machine, though. I'm, I'm assuming you've had good luck with it. If you didn't put the, uh, the gantry on backwards here, dummy. That's me. I'm the dummy who put this on backwards because I wasn't paying attention. Um, SVO1 Pro, good machine. Good machine. Um, I like to get that printer for high temp printing. This printer for high temp printing? I mean, you could probably, it, it, I mean, it's direct drive, so you could do high temp printing, but not like ABS or something because it's not enclosed. There we go. You know what my deal is here? I think my deal is I am used to, I, I know exactly what I did. I am used to seeing my motors. That's super crazy. Now I see what I did. Um, I'm used to seeing the motors face backwards. Your, your um, Z motors there, usually they face backwards on like every every single machine. So that's exactly what I did. I just threw it on when I, the way I thought it was supposed to go on. Oops. Um, Tyler West, what's up? Man, I wish you could have been at Earth. It was a lot of fun. Um, let's see. When you start a print on that, probably going to make a brief grinding noise. Joel never figured it out today, but it was just the auto z-axis level system not doing what it's supposed to do okay we're gonna find out so do you know uh, anybody who watched anybody else's streams today nero or joel or whoever else streamed <laughs> do you know if they updated the firmware right away because um i was told like two or three times at least to make sure i update this firmware before i do anything so the first thing we're going to do when we plug this thing in, we're going to make sure the firmware card or card is in there with firmware and update it right away. Ah, we watched both. No update, huh? Well, that's what's going to be different about my stream. Woo -woo. <laughs> uh, let me just make sure this is... That is so weird to me. I do love this footprint, but it's so weird to me to have your extruder motors facing forward. That's just it blow it that the bot you know that's just weird. Um, I might as well plug it in while it's down there, right? So there's a little Z wire that came out of the side. I'm assuming there's one on this side too. There is. I'll, I'll watch chat in a second here. I just want to keep moving here. Okay. NH3D Canada, how you doing? Uh, firmware. What's firmware? <laughs> That's awesome. Let's see. That's the Prusa way, right? Um, who needs firmware? Ferrell's on the printer of this class is impressive. Does it? Does it have ferrules? Did anybody open? Did anyone open the case today? I'm guessing it's all in here. It's got to be right. Yeah, it is. Um. It's, it's pretty sweet, I guess. We're going to find out. All right, here we go. Keep moving. Keep moving. Putting this display on. It's the right side of the base. Hold it down diagonally. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we get our display out. Nero did. Okay, good. Nero saw ferrules. Perfect. And that means, that means I don't have to take them out. And I can just get this thing up and printing faster. Thank you, Nero. I appreciate that. Taylor is a good dude. Um, had a lot of fun with him this weekend as well. Um, he was he was racing. Super fast car he had. Uh, eraser he had too. Not as fast as John's. Uh, or tripods. Tripod won the uh, drag race. That was fair and square. I'll call it out. <laughs> 
So this is going to come out like this. Let's see if I can make that better. There we go. Little thing here. We're going to plug this in. I don't think it matters to which one. Uh, it does not say at all which one to plug this into, but I don't think it matters. Let me just... I'm going to plug it into the one closest to the machine, I think. That's what I feel like today. How about that? That's what I'm going to do. It's my machine. I can do what I want. All right, here we go. Plug it in. Then I'm just going to drop it on the little pre-installed mounting screws. And they give you a couple different angles, which is kind of cool. Uh, well, I thought they did. There we go. I lied. They don't. There we go. It only goes on that way, or it looks like it does. This is a giant belt tensioner uh, knob. <laughs> Look at that. All right. I digress. Ah, uh, here we go. I don't have room for every printer I'd like to buy. Me too. I agree with that. Order two of them. Um, Jonathan, yes, they had a great price. They still have a great price. I think it's like two twenty-five right now or something. Jump on the, uh, hit the link in the description and if someone wants to hit that link and, and let me know. I'm pretty sure I think it's still at 225 ish. Um, use three, three, it matters. Yeah, three. I don't know what three means. Glenn, three. What does three mean? I don't know what three means. All right. I uh, pre ordered a Prusa XL and no idea where I'll put it. Well, at least you have like a year and a half to figure it out. Um, 239. I was close. I was close. Um, so yeah, a year and a half ish. I mean, you, you, you might see your Prusa XL by the end of next year, if you're lucky. Uh, step two, step two. Hey, look, they put step two on the, uh, package here. Look, Let's see if I can make it see that. See step two. Crazy, huh? I need a little top down light. I'm going to have to figure that out. <laughs> okay. Assemble the power supply M4 by 20s. That's these. So this is it's very similar to those other machines where the power supply is going to sit on here like this and get screwed into the back here like this and just kind of hover. I haven't seen a machine like this in a while. Usually they're going under or now and stuff like that. But hey, we'll take it. Plug, plug on screen, use the third one. Okay, good. The third one closest to me or third one away? <laughs> I did uh, the LCD port closest to the machine, which would be, you know, the, the third one if you're going from the other way. Um, yep, not seeing it soon. Okay, let's see. Yeah, I have not seen one like this since the Enders. I mean, myself. We'll start this like that. Yeah, uh, Prusa XL, definitely not seeing it soon. You're right. Hopefully, logistics wise, it's getting better, but good luck. Not saying anything bad about it. I think it's going to be a beast of a machine. What we saw at Earth was a beast of a machine. What is going on here? Um, but getting it might just be the, uh, the challenge. Come on. You can do it, little buddy. Oh, come on. Plug on screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. Got it. Let's see if I can get this. There we go. Just had to loosen the top one for a second. See this? This is why I love the T-handles. You could just... <laughs> that was like a... <laughs> See, tripod, I'm not even doing a desk video, but I am doing it on a desk, and if I do this, it shakes. So don't do that. This is a uh, homemade... This is a homemade sit-stand bench with a sit-stand uh, desk frame underneath, and then I made the, the bench top here. So, yeah, yeah. There's that. Okay. Check. Uh, install the extruder kit 
on the slide with three M three by fives. Uh oh, what do you want to bet? Oh, maybe they give me extra because those little baby ones, um, those little baby ones are the same size as these little M three by fives. I'm hoping that was just a couple of extra ones. Otherwise, we're in trouble. Uh, Cody says, uh, I'm sorry, Cole Healy, Cole Healy, what is your personal go-to printer? Uh, one, while I am filming on the Sovol SV06, and Sovol has been great to me, great printers so far. Um, even their dual extruder SV04 was awesome. Uh, I gave that to a friend, and he is just rocking it, doing helmets and all sorts of cool stuff. Um, my personal go-to printers currently, I have three of them, and they're the Bamboo X1 Carbons. A lot more expensive than this, different, completely different class of printer, different entry point, different crowd. But that's my go-to, yes, what my go-to was. Got to be honest, right? Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's get this. Let's get the extruder on here that goes on here. It's interesting. Very interesting design. I, I got to say that. Very interesting design. Um, it looks like it sits on. Where do these go? Oh, oh I see. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So it sits on and then it screws in through, let me just show you this here. Um, let's see, right here, right there, and right there. So there's three holes. It's super hard to see. You can kind of see it through them right there, right here, right here, and there's one over here. So it, this thing sits on the, the gantry. It sits in here like that, and then you use your um, little bolts to, to secure it. It is in, looks like injection molded. Yeah, injection molded pieces. Um, that is a tiny, those are tiny little M, let's see. Woo, it's tiny. So I'm using a, a two millimeter Allen. My little Alan Travis. <laughs> this is going to go on like this. I, I, I hope this thing rock and rolls because I really do like the footprint. Uh, someone asked me what the footprint was. I am going to get to that. I will measure it. Um, there we go. So there's one. <laughs> John, John, I'm sorry. I had to be honest, right? I mean, there you go. Love my bamboo. Love my bamboo. I literally, I have three of them. I just, I just put the the new AMS on my very original beta uh, today, and I love it. Um, but like I said, I've I've always liked these Sovol machines. They've always, oh geez, that is a tiny screw, and it went flying. Um, they've always done very good. Uh, Sobel has always been awesome. Heidi is great. And I've, I've literally not had any problems. I've given away most of my Sobel machines because I can trust them to give them to people. Um, that That is, you know, that's what I do because I don't, I don't have time to print on everything, right? So I would rather give them to somebody who I know is actually going to use them. And I can tell you they all went in good hands. And they all get used way more than I would use them. All right. Stop with the bamboo. You're going to cost me a little bit. It looks really pretty. I just got a Neptune 3 for my first printer. Excited to get into the hobby. Awesome, Cole. Uh, the, the Neptune 3, I heard nothing but great, um, nothing but great things about that. Uh, I'm going to be honest. I didn't unbox mine. <laughs> I gave it to my cousin. And he unboxed it, and he's using it. Um, so that's where mine is. Um, filament gets expensive. Yes. It's so hard to keep that thing fed. And if try having three of them, you need to keep them all going, which I don't have to. But, you know, if you want to, it gets expensive. Um, I have a CraftBot Flow IDEX that takes a lot of space. My little V-Minion v, v, v is tucked next to it. Nice. 
Trunksy came out with an IDEX. Interesting. I can give it to you. <laughs> All right, what do we got? Assembly, the control box. There is a uh, lock and an unlock. Turn the aircraft switch on the control box hanging plate to the left to the locked state uh, to the unlocked state. I'm not even lying. They're calling this, I got to see why. But if you can see here, they're calling it an aircraft uh, switch. It looks like a space shuttle. That is pretty dang awesome. Cheers. How you doing? You know, for, for three streams, um, 60 people right now is not bad. Thank you guys all for being here. I really appreciate it. I'm going to turn the <laughs> turn the aircraft switch on the back here. That's this one. Uh, up to the unlock our, on our aircraft switch here. And then I'm going to figure out why I don't have enough. I don't think I have enough. Maybe I'm crazy. Yeah, we're going to find out in a second, right? Let's spin that around. Okay, good. So um, there's little rocket ships in here. If you can see those. Kind of. It looks like these are going to slot into these. Um, wait. I was wrong. Sideways is unlocked. Okay, good. So these slide in, and then this little thing here turns up and locks in so your box can't get out. Very uh, creative. Very creative, I'd say. Are there 3D printers that use multiple colors at one time, not, not in the same filament roll? Absolutely. Um, not necessarily like pushing three colors at the same time so you get like a mix. There's two color ones that I know, um, or there's some that do a mix if you want. Um, but uh, there's, there's several different ways you can get multicolor prints. You can, if you're just into this, depending on what slicer you're using, um, you can do it by changing layers on your slicer too. So that's pretty cool. You just tell, tell the slicer, stop at this layer, do a filament change. You change your filament when it gets there, then it keeps going in your new color, and then you can do different colors at different layers. It's pretty cool too. Uh, no tool leader. I, I do like that. So the control panel, no tools needed. I do like that. Let me let me drop this over here so uh, maybe you can see. It's really hard to see. Here's your USB, and there is your uh, SD card. They're right in the top here. Kind of hard to see because it's a little bit further away. Ooh, watching this after you're done, I'm building my new i9 PC. All my parts arrived today, Rob H. Awesome, man. Um, which i9 did you go with? And I got to know what graphics card you hit, right? The graphics cards right now, if you're looking for a graphics card, killer sales on the 30 series. Uh, why not? I mean, why not? If you go to, if you wait and pay a bajillion dollars for, for the new series, um, not only that, you're going to have to upgrade your power supply uh, because they are power supply hungry. And, um, you, you know, you they have a lot of them come with an adapter to use with the older power supplies, but don't do that. Just get the real power supply that plugs into the thing. And you're going to rock and roll. AM, AMD 6800. Okay. Okay. Um, here we go. Install the filament plate on the top. Uses these two screws here. Almost there. All nine, high nine gang, let's go. Facts, yes. Yes, all the PC parts arriving is a special type of excitement. Absolutely. I'm going to have to say this. Parts for any project arriving is a special type of excitement. I don't care if it's PCs, death racers, printers. Uh, I have an airplane right down here that I got all the parts for. I need to put them all together, but I have them. Um, an RC airplane is going to be a lot of fun. So let's do this. All right, Sovel says to put it on like this. I believe like that. So that's what we're going to do. These are some beefy screws. We're jumping back up to the, um, I believe this is going to be a four millimeter head. It is. Um, I got to look at that text chat again. Give me one second. Let me start this. Um, 
bought everything before the prices started going up. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, 239, great deal. Absolutely. Right now, this is 239. So far, I don't know anything about the printing of this thing. I can't, I can't, I can't speak to that yet, but we will. Um, let's see. Why, why is it? Why? Why it's an Ender 3 copy way showing it. You got almost no people. I'm not sure what you mean, Stir 99. Um, in my opinion, the combination of V-Wheels, ABL, dual gear, direct drive, PEI plate, all metal, 300 degree hot end, makes it be unmatched for the money. If it performs, if you can pick it up for 239, load it, this would be a great deal. Be a great deal. If it performs, right? Uh, I plan on doing a live TikTok. Be a lot of fun. Yes. Um, it's an inconvenient location on the SD card slot. Yeah, kind of. It's kind of up here in the back. It's out of the way, though. Um, it's kind of inconvenient depending on how you place it. But I kind of, I don't mind it. There's, there's definitely worse. Um, agree with Jonathan. Yes, agree. So tired of looking at V-Wheels. <laughs> Yeah, um, let's see. SD card slot should be on the side. It, yeah, yeah, I suppose I could see that. Maybe I'm one of the sides. Um, what type of SS? I'm sorry, what part? It's uh, micro. They'll take a micro SD card. All right, here we go. Now, the last thing to do. What are we at here? 45 minutes. Long enough. Um, we're going to plug this into XP3. Hey, they do say it in the back here. We're going to plug the screen in. I probably should make sure it's in three. I said I did the one closest, but really doesn't mean anything, right? Uh, I was. So one closest to the machine is XP3. Nailed it. Nailed it. All right, we got those two plugged in already. Um, let me spin this bad boy around so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. If I wasn't talking, this thing would have been done in like 10 minutes or so. Uh, in the back, there's XT60 connector. So I'm going to uh, plug that in. Done. Check. Um, y is good already. Uh, this one needs to be snipped. I need a snips because why not? <laughs> this needs clipperizing. Uh, maybe. I'm hoping it's like beefy enough that would it be able to take clipperizing this. I mean, no, clipperizing stuff rattles the bejeebus out of stuff sometimes, you know. Um, let me spin this back around so you can kind of see. Um, so this is your cable for your hot end. It comes underneath the extrusion, always go underneath. Plugs straight in. You open up little clips. Plug straight into the top, very much similar to like an... Um, to the uh, Sprite extruder. And then there's two little clips that it clips into for strain relief. I like that, thank you, Sovel. Strain relief is good. There's also strain relief on the bed that I see here. Um, it's very hard to show you, but I'm gonna try anyway. You can see it right here. So there's a piece here, the cable comes out and it's zip tied right there. So you got some strain relief right there. Um, let's see. What else do we need to, what else do we need to plug in? X. Ooh. Here, X. There you are. There's X. I like that X is straight up and down. I didn't even have to look. I saw the groove here. I didn't have to look from the front. Um, I like that instead of hiding it, it's somewhere in the plate and all that stuff. Um, power, two Zs, X, Y. Let me just double check why. I'm pretty sure why was already plugged in. It was. This is not the smoothest slider. Might need a little grease. Um, but we'll go from there in a minute. Okay. Before we go any further, we are put together now. I'm going to store these little hot end screws. I'm pretty sure that's what this was. Um, in a little bag, I'm going to go back to looking at um, this chat for a second. I'm also going to start working on the firmware um, on my side real quick here. So I'm going to grab my keyboard and my mouse. 
power supply. Oh, you know what? Let me let me um, let me measure this real quick. Someone asked me to measure it before I do anything else. Let me grab this here. Power supply switch. There is on the side. Yes. Power supply switch is right there. Right there. Um, I'm going to slide that all the way to the back, and I'm going to measure. Uh, a little bit of the, the, the cable because you can't just put it up against the wall. The cable will hit, right? Um, let's see. Everything should be a web interface. Okay. Um, display is perfect. What types of things are legal to print? If anything, I imagine there's got to be some regulations. Um, what you do and what you print is your own deal. <laughs> I cannot give legal advice. A Sprite Cranberry Extruder. <laughs> That's funny. What's the build size? 235 by 235 by 250. Um, Got to go to the store later. Used to a bigger display. Okay. Hi, all. Great stream tonight. Thanks for the build, Brandon. Thank you so much. No flyback diodes on the controller. Saw the screen flash when it moved the bed. Probably. <laughs> I was moving it fast. Can the nozzles be swapped for the E3D ones? I don't think so. If you're talking about like Revo or something. I don't know. I don't know. 240 or 110? Yes. Uh, all right. Let's do some measuring. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a, uh, maybe like an inch and a half, two inches longer because you need a little bit of room for that cable in the back, right? So what I see here, figure figure having a space that's probably whew, if I did 19 inches. Yeah, 19 inches should be okay if you needed a space. Um, the theoretical measurement is like 17, but I would add like two inches just to be safe because the the back where your, let me spin this, where this comes out here, you don't want that to hit something every time it goes back, right? Um, wide, let's go with... 15 and a half to be safe if you don't care about your fingers trying to get in something like a cabinet or anything if you want to use this in a cabinet um, 16 would be safer but 15 15 and a half would be about right tall to the spool holder we got roughly oh 24 inches i'd say um let me see i can get more accurate than that yeah, I'd say 24 inches to the top of the spool holder. Don't forget, you got to put a spool on there too. So there you, there you go. There's your measurements. I'd say 19 and a half by 15 and a half by two feet tall, plus a spool here. Um, I did check the voltage on the power supply before I put it on. Can you print ABS? You could, but there's no enclosure on this, so it may not do very well. Um... Yeah, nah, like just the standard one, like Nozzle X, got a collection I'd like to use up. I believe you can, yes. I mean, as long as the, the nozzle fits, it should be fine. All right, let me move this over. I'm going to move chat down um, real quick. I'm going to go and find my firmware that they made sure that I need to install. Um, so give me a second here. I'm going to do that. Y'all keep talking in the chat. I'm good with that. I'm gonna grab a drink of water. Let me know what you're drinking too. I'm I'm drinking some very fancy French La Croix water. <laughs> I drink a lot of water. I should drink more because it really helps. All right, here we go. Heidi, don't forget to upgrade the firmware. All right, let's go find this firmware. Download. All right, downloading the firmware now. It is a bin file. Um, so I am assuming that's what we're going to do here. We're going to assume that we're going to toss it on an SD card, throw it in a printer, and update. Also, there's a Solvol Cura um, in here. 
and I may or may not use it. I prefer Prusa Slicer myself. All right, let me close this window. Let me get back to normal uh, chat window here. There we go. Water, awesome. A lot of water. How's the little man? He's doing great. Me measurement's perfect where I'll put it. Awesome. Um, Modelo, mm. uh, Hennessy White, nice. I love it. A little water, a little water. A lot of people drinking water today. Um, Jonathan, my wife is absolutely picky about water. She will not drink like regular water most of the time. Sky down, how you doing, man? Um, is is uh, Tripod's Garage having another Long Island iced tea? <laughs> Probably. I don't know. That was pretty. Uh, that was pretty funny. Not gonna lie. <laughs> All right, I just grabbed a uh, SD card that I know is good, and I just cleared it off. I just put um, bigger SD cards on on all of my, uh, if I can find a reader. There we go. Garbage. Oh, you know what? They probably include one. So I just put 32 gig SD cards on my Bamboo X1 Carbons. So... All of those are ready to rock and roll. All right. Here's the SD card reader. <laughs> Tripod is laughing. May take a few. I don't know about that. We know better, Tripod. Dude, my wife gets upset because I'm so picky about water. Yeah, I, I, um, I'm not, I tell my wife all the time, you got to drink your water. Um, it's, it's like, you know, it's great for you, right? And... She doesn't like it. She doesn't want to drink it. So there's that. Okay. So I just dropped. Uh, I got to move this again real quick here. I just dropped the SD card in. I'm going to go move the uh, firmware. So what I'm going to do before I do this, I'm just going to give everybody a heads up. I'm going to power this thing on. We're going to see what version of the firmware is on it. Oops. Oh, let's see. Goodbye. Um, and then uh, we'll, we'll power down and do the firmware upgrade. So this is 1.83 is what this bin file says. And what is happening here? Okay, let's paste you. Maybe. Um, there we go. That's what I thought. Now we'll eject you. Boom. Okay, so 1.83 is what the file they sent me was. Let me just move chat back. Chat, 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 chatteroni. Okay. If you uh, if you give away printers after doing a review, feel free to send it to New Zealand if you want. Hey, I wish I could afford the um, what did I just do? I wish I could afford uh, the shipping to New Zealand. I think I just did what I think I just did. Oh no. Let me just see here. Come on. I obviously can't put, put my SD card in like that. Get out of here. I did do what I just think I just did. Dang it. Be right back. Going to go cry a little. <laughs> All right. Got to get a different SD card. There we go. So I grabbed the wrong SD card. And then I deleted it. And then I uh, added the firmware to it. So there's that. Um, but that's okay. I just grabbed the wrong one. And it happened. It's not a big deal. Luckily, there wasn't too much stuff on there that mattered. Let's 
Try this again. Um, paste. There we go, but it was too big. So I, I grabbed a different one. There we go. Now we're good. Now we're good. <laughs> it cries a lot. Yes, what happened? Yes, I grabbed the wrong SD card, deleted it, formatted it, and then added the firmware to it. I grabbed the wrong one. So it was a... It was the wrong one. That's okay, though. Stuff happens. Let's power this thing up. Let's see if we got power, see what firmware it's on, and then see what firmware it goes to. So here's your power. Um, it is on the side like that, very much like an Ender 3. What is going on here? go power let's see what we got no smoke yet which is great i'll clean this stuff up in a second here there is no back on the screen so that'll be an update and upgrade the back of the screen um so printer info it is 182 uh version 182 so we're gonna flip that off, open another water, get that ready. We're gonna take the correct SD card. We're gonna put it in. Um, so I'm gonna figure out which way it goes in. Okay, so just a heads up, it goes in backwards. So the front of the SD card facing you and it just pushes right in the top. I don't hate this. I actually don't hate where it is so far. Uh, let me fire this thing up and make sure it updates yes they should agreed uh it is appearing to update i think to release the blue screen soval there we go i listened uh follow directions Up upgrade the firmware before printing all right let's go see what uh version it is now 183 one a three now okay so you know it's upgraded um the first thing i want to do is let's run through what it wants us to do for leveling because there's a whole leveling guide here i want to walk through that real quick hopefully see what happens uh, let me get some of this garbage put away real quick though because you know no one likes garbage everywhere. There we go. There we go. Oh, we don't need the, that anymore. We don't need this anymore. I could use a Long Island about right now. I'm going to pop out the SD card for that. I'm going to pop in their SD card. Okay. In the box here, we got a, uh, a power cord. And a tiny bit of PLA, 50 grams. I really wish companies would start sending a real amount of uh, stuff. Uh, filament, your classic tools, nozzle cleaner, some Allen wrenches. A Actually, this one comes with a tweezers. I like that. Nice. A tweezers, uh, a couple wrenches. But it does have a little tweezer in here. Now, there you go. That's something different. Came with a tweezer. Look at that. I like that a lot. Uh, so a tweezers and uh, this little spatula here. A little scraper spatula, whatever you want to call it. Um, also a nozzle wrench. You can see in the bag, kind of. There's a nozzle wrench and an extra nozzle in here. Just trying to keep it all together. Um, if I do... Give this away or something. I like to keep everything together. How you doing? Sovol 3D Tech. How you going? How's it going? Oh, yeah. And your snips. So let's get that all aside. Let's grab their leveling card. Um, and it should be the same as this. So this is the leveling card they gave me. I'm going to push this a little bit off to the side. I'm going to show you this. Um, this is the leveling card. And it kind of walks you through all the steps of leveling. We're going to do that now. Okay. 
So press the knob, go to main bed leveling auto Z align. So we're going to, I did upgrade my firmware, Sovel. I know you're watching. I upgraded the firmware. We got 183 now, I believe. Um, 183. That's something the other two guys that streamed today didn't do, you know. Um, <laughs> let me go back here. Um, so, <laughs> um, so I'm going to go to bed leveling. And then we're going to go to auto Z align. There we go. It'll home first. Then the entire X axis will rise to the top for calibration. Now, I like this. Um, it should rise all the way to the top. There's little stoppers up here. It's kind of hard to see, which should make... It should force the Z, you know, your, your axis there, your Z on both sides to be aligned at the top. So your X axis will technically be aligned is, is what we're doing there. Um, let's see, entire X axis will uh, align to the top for calibration and then descend back to home. So right now we're, I believe we're descending. I'm not sure if this is the initial homing or if this is after it went up, but we're gonna find out in a minute. Welcome to Ask Questions, and I'll help answer if Jim doesn't know uh, or notice your question. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'm not sure who's with us from Sobel. Is it Heidi? Is, uh, Heidi, are you with us, or is it somebody else? Because I don't know a lot of people from Sobel. I know Heidi. <laughs> right now, we're going through the uh, calibration. Honestly, setup of this machine, if I wasn't talking 15 minutes tops, um, it's not very It's super, super easy. Very fast. Um Okay, so it homed down. Now it's going back up. I'm going to turn this so you guys can kind of see that a little better. So now what it's going to do is it's going to raise to the top and make sure both of these points hit up here, uh, I'm assuming. And so it's straight. It's May Young. Hi, May. I do know you. Never mind. I lied. I know May and Heidi. <laughs> I really like the bed rods to keep it stable. I hope to see a 300 millimeter one soon. Yeah, I'm hoping this thing prints very nice so we can... Um, so maybe a 300 millimeter uh, version would be in the works. I like that there's no tools on the control box here. You can take it off and put it on and all that stuff. I believe there's ferrules on there. Nero opened his today and they uh, chat said there's ferrules. I didn't watch anybody else's streams. I wanted to come in this very clean. Um, but Nero said there's ferrules and I trust him. Um, what style hot end does the SV06 have? Is this a V6 clone? Do you hear that? Oh, it's hard to hear. But it actually went up and grinded, like kind of like that was it trying to level itself out. So now your X axis should be straight across the board. If you know from your Ender 3 days or my video, one of my most popular videos is the X gantry rework because you have to get that thing straight. And it is always sitting, you know, kind of cattywampus. You don't want that. So if this thing does it automatically, it's got dual Z as we see, dual Z motors. Um, I like it. I like it. Qu shoot the questions. Any, any questions you have, uh, for myself or for May, May Young, hopefully I said that correctly, <laughs> but right now we're doing the uh, leveling. So, uh, you auto Z align it first. So we did that. Um, it does say when this machine hits the top, it's going to make a noise. So it does warn you. I just want to show you that up here, right here. When this machine hits the top, it's going to make a noise. It's normal. Just keep waiting for it to go down. You don't need to adjust this step every time you level. Only do it when you feel that the ex excess is not level enough. So maybe when you move the machine um, is a good idea. So if I pick this thing up and move it somewhere, Probably a good idea to do this again. Um, so now it's back down. I believe it's done. So now we're going to go to bed leveling, auto home. Oh, I'm sorry. Click bed leveling and auto home. And then let's see. Number two, click bed leveling. Oh, let's just do what it says. Bed leveling, auto home, proceed. Okay. It 
It'll, uh, after clicking Auto Home the first time, the machine will be preheated automatically. The nozzle at 120C, the hotbed at 60C. Uh, the first time after the temperature is reached, click Auto Home again to proceed. Oh, I probably shouldn't have hit proceed until it was heated up. So there's that. <laughs> Should have read directions, right? Uh, looks like they're saying the planetary gear extruder of the SV06 is self-developed. It's not a hot end, or in the hot end, it's not a V6 clone. Okay, there you go. Um, so we're just waiting for temp to get up. We're at 126 on the nozzle and 38, about 40 now on the bed. So it is heating up. So it'll do its thing. After the machine stops, uh, go back and click probe Z offset to adjust the difference between the nozzle and the hot bed. Uh, don't forget to click save settings after you adjust the Z offset about 0.2 millimeters, the thickness of a sheet of A4 paper. When you drag the paper, the nozzle can scratch the paper slightly. That means its distance is suitable. Don't forget to save that. Click level the bed. The machine will detect 25 points on the hot bed uh, leveling end. So just a heads up, after clicking leveling the bed, it will rise to 120C and 60C. So 120 on the nozzle, 60 on the bed. And be careful because it will get hot. So that's awesome. They are actively heating the nozzle and the bed before they're doing the auto leveling. Um, I, you know, if you ever have done auto leveling, sometimes what happens even with regular leveling is you don't have it hot. You do it when it heats up, everything expands and then it's completely off. <laughs> so just a quick heads up. It does heat it to 120C on the nozzle and 60C on the bed to do the actual leveling, which we're going to get there. We're not there yet, but we're getting there. What kind of nozzle does it use? I uh, would like to try abrasive filaments. I believe it's just a brass nozzle on there right now. It is. But when you do abrasives, you want to do something um, uh, more strong. So they'll probably, you could probably get replacement nozzles for some abrasive stuff. Otherwise, your brass one will just get eaten away pretty quick. Um, let's see. What did I do here? Did that leveling? Yeah. Auto home. There you go. There we go. So it just auto homed. Okay. Um, now go back to bed leveling uh, probe Z offset and adjust your Z offset. Let's see. I think there's a piece of paper. I don't I imagine you could use what comes with it, but I'm just going to grab a uh, sheet of regular old paper if I can find one. There we go. I'm going to toss it underneath and bring this thing down, I'm assuming. So it's just started to drag. That's too much. That's odd. There we go. So it's just dragging right now. I think that'd be good. We're going to stick with that. And I'm going to uh, store settings, I believe. Okay, I did the store settings with the Z offset. Hopefully I did that correctly. Um, should be good there. It says, don't forget to save settings after doing your Z adjust. Great. So then click level bed. So I'm going to pull this out and we should do a bed leveling now. And we're going to see how fast this rock and rolls through the bed leveling. Uh, 
So when it goes down and does its level, the little light on top of the touch or on the um, center, I'm sorry, does go out and back on. There we go. It's going to do uh, 25 points. Any questions while we're waiting on this? It looks very clean. I like it. If I had a built-in Wi-Fi, I'd snatch it up. Eh, you could do um, easily. You could do um, Octoprint on this. Yeah, that's what I would do. Um, do you guys think it's needly, neededly highly? I'm not sure what that means. May consider if there's enough market demand. Uh, post a soul will usually give a second screenshot. Um, I, I'm guessing you're talking about like Delta, either Deltas or something. I'm not sure. Are the blue parts machine printed or injection molded? They're injection molded. Um, hear the beep. Does the offset is stored? Yep. I forgot to save mine many times. <laughs> Absolutely. I figured. So what you do is when you when you adjust the offset to where you want it, you hit the button. It says OK. And then you scroll down in the same menu where it says store settings. Hit store settings and then it saves it. It's almost done here. That's pretty quick. I'm gonna have a little water while we're waiting, and we're gonna get some uh, filament loaded up on this bad boy and get rolling. Hour fifteen, not too bad. Um, so in the back here, I'll show you this. It says right here. Maybe we are using a bimetal throat. So the setting, uh, so setting the retraction distance too high may cause clogging. In our test, the retraction distance of 0.5 millimeters was the most suitable. The following are the retraction parameters for Sovol, Cura, and Prusa slicer, and it gives you, you know, each one, which is awesome. And then it goes on and gives you some tips when printing ABS. Put it in an enclosure. There you go. Uh, lower your fan, etc. So that's pretty cool, a bimetal throat, and it gives you um, right in here where you want to set it in Kira or Prusa Slicer. So that's pretty awesome. Diops, have a great night. Um, yeah, Delta Printers, that's what you're talking about. Okay. Upgrades for the Sobel SV Series machines. Okay, so that looks like we're done. Looks good to me. I don't know if you can go back and see what it is or not. Uh, let's just do that leveling. Um, there's a probe test. All that good stuff in here. But all right. Info screen. We're rocking. So it does not. it did not cool down yet. It's still sitting at 121 and 60. Just a heads up. Um, it did not cool down after the bed leveling. Uh, May, that's something we might want to think about. Some people might um, say that it's not cooling down and stuff like that. I think normal people will just print right away, so you won't have to worry about it. But after your bed leveling, I think you could tell it to uh, cool itself down in, in that uh, uh, menu there. Anyways. So what do we got next? I think we're going to feed this thing some filament. Let's do that. Let me grab some filament real quick here. There's some right over here. Do, do, do. Um, I used this one last time. Here we go. Here we go. This is what I'm going to use. I got some filament. Fulament Matte Gray PLA. That is a matte gray by Fulament. I do have a uh, affiliate with them if you're interested. This stuff is awesome. Matte Filament. Uh, they're a really good, uh, really good company and uh, had very good success. So click preheat, preheat ABS or PLA. So we will do that. Um, Prepare, preheat PLA, uh, preheat PLA. There we go. So we're rocking and rolling on the preheat PLA. When it's ready, it tells you to cut it at a 45-degree angle. Thank you so much, Sovel, for putting together a very good guide here. Um, right here, boom. Cut your 
filament at an angle, 45 degrees, and it tells you how to load it. So thank you for doing that. Uh, I know that's a big thing. A lot of people don't know to do that. So there's that. The temperature rises to the target temp. Cut your filament to 45 degree bevel, insert it to the feed port for about 20 millimeters, and then turn the wheel until you see it coming out of the nozzle. But it wants you to make sure that you disable steppers before you do that because you don't want to do that. Or um, Otherwise, you can change filament. It looks like you can do it that way too. Uh, you go to change filament, yes. Select the type you're trying to change. Wait for it to rise. And then it'll withdraw automatically. And then insert new filament to start printing. There you go. Uh, yes, fast pro faster than the SBL3, absolutely. Um, it's supposed to be like the uh, i3 MK3S. You take that however you want. <laughs> Um, I don't. I do like how the power supply and the tracks are mounted where they are. Wouldn't it be hard to enclose and keep things outside the enclosure. Absolutely. Um, do you sand your prints to get rid of layer lines? Eh, you can. Um, a lot of people either sand or prime. You can use a primer and then sand the primer. Um, PLA tends to melt if you sand it too much and stuff. Just be careful. Um, pro props were sold for including settings for a competitor slicer. Absolutely. Um, design the manual, make it clear enough. Got several good feedback. Yes. I, I would say, in my opinion, over the five machines ish that I've had for you guys, this is the best manual I've seen yet. Um, so keep up the great work. Whoever's doing your manuals, tell them to keep up the great work. Okay. I already did that at an angle. We're heated up here. Um, I thought we were heated up here. 185 and 60. Okay. Well, it says we're heated up. We're going to go for it. Creative 3D Studio, how you doing? So I'm going to pull this back, push this down, and then I'm going to keep pushing until I see stuff coming out, and I do see it now, and we're good. Now, they do include a tweezers, which I really like because you can uh, reach under here with your tweezers and grab this instead of using your snips and burning your fingers if you just use your fingers. So there's that. One thing I didn't do yet is clean the bed. We're going to do that real quick. Always, 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 always clean your bed, especially the first time you use it. I just use uh, IPA on a paper towel. Um, sometimes I spray it right on the, a lot of times I spray it right on the bed, but there's a lot of hot stuff going on over here and the power supply is up there and blah, blah, blah. So let's not do that. I'm just going to, do that. We're going to clean it up. If you did not get a chance to see this um, hot, this uh, flex plate, it's pretty dang awesome. Um, let's see if I can show that a little better here. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see. I'm a little bit interested on how good that's sliding because it's not sliding great. I might have to grease these, but you can see it's pretty cool. Uh, I like the grid. Uh, it says Soval on there. It says the uh, bed plate size, 235 by 235. So, yeah. Also has tabs up here. So, maybe it's a little cooler in these areas to pull it off. Okay. Here we go. Let's print something, huh? Let's get something going. Injection molded parts are nice. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. I haven't watched anything. I, I saw a bunch of videos come out. I saw some live streams today. Um, I have not watched a single thing. SS test. There's a dog, a 3D Benchy. Thank you, Sovel. Thank you for calling it the Benchy. I just did another machine for another company, and they called it Little Boat. It's not a little boat. It's called a Benchy. Props to Daniel Nori. Anyways, um, at least they called the right thing. Okay. I don't know what SS test G code is. May, what do you know what SS test G code is? Is it like a cube or something? Is it dual sided? Um, I'll find out. We can find out. Uh, nope, not dual sided. I forgot, I've already did that earlier, but that's okay though. 
I'm digging the, I, I am digging the flex. I love flex plates. I love flex plates. All right. Um, yeah. Welcome to contact us. Injection hold of March. Yes. Uh, that is the print stress test overhangs tolerance as such. Can we try it? Let's do it. I don't know what that means, but we're doing it. All right. We're going to let this thing do its thing. This thing to do its thing. And let it print. I want to make sure that the uh, Z height is correct. So I'm going to be watching that closely during these first few seconds here. So I'm going to come around the corner just in case I need to stop it. I don't want to be jamming this brand new board. Wow. Now the side looks great. Woo. Not going to lie. That, that purge looked very nice. Let's see how this looks now. I might even have to go grab a GoPro and get this set up for you guys. Man, that looks awesome. It's sticking very well. I got my Z height right on, and um, I don't know how many times you've done a Z height, you've saved it, and then you print it, and it was way off. Not so much on this one. So, digging it, digging it. Um, kind of looks like a. Um, so well, I was just I was just curious what the uh, I think it was like SS test or something was called. We just ran it anyway. Uh, what we drink in the Edge of Tech? This is a very fancy uh, Lacroix water. I was disabled the steppers and turn it off. Yeah, I should have. I should have disabled the steppers, but I didn't. Um, the magnet feels pretty decent. Um, it doesn't feel like it's going to snap your fingers off at all, but it feels like it's going to stick. Um. <laughs> it's you know what though you need to make sure your magnet's strong because say you did like a full a full build plate sized print i'm talking like first layer is as big as the build plate goes i have seen uh a curl on a print that pulls up the flex plates excuse me that pulls up the flex plates so the stronger the magnet the better um yeah, yeah. I was just curious what SS test is. We're doing it anyway. It doesn't matter. I might grab a GoPro so we can try to get you guys over here and get a get a better shot. Give me just a minute. All my stuff was packed. Um, <laughs> so I just got back from Earth on Monday. I have not got everything out yet. And uh, I definitely did not have my uh, GoPros ready for the stream. And I use a GoPro... Um, I use a GoPro when I am trying to do the very close-up shots. So, yeah. Hey, I got to tell you, props to the guide. The guy looks great. Pictures are perfect. Um, printing stuff looks really nice. It tells you what to use, how to set it up. Uh, it shows you what board you're using. I, I did not open it, but um, on the on the page here it shows you what the board is um nice work so far so good this thing's off to a great start the first layer first layer looks pretty good i probably could come down and squish it a little more just a little more but i definitely could come down and squish it a little more um but it's not bad it's a great starting point. Um, yeah, I need a little bit more squish on that first layer, but I can do that. I can do that anytime. Actually, let's just see if it's baked into the firmware. Come on now. All right, you can go to tune. Um, advanced K probe Z offset. You can do it so i'm gonna go down a little and see if that helps out my first layer now one thing about the giant hot end you can't see very good under there um but that's that you know it happens uh, as soon as i can get a good view of what it's doing i'll tell you if it's squished it a little more or not <laughs> it should have i brought it down a couple clicks there I just cannot see it. It's definitely sticking, though. It's definitely sticking. 
Are you talking about this wheel? Absolutely. Come on, let me see. Yeah. All right, I'm going to bring it down just a little bit more. Um, better store it, though. There we go. Let's see. All right, let me, let me see how that goes. Um, getting the GoPro out so I can get you guys closer. I will do that. I'll do my best to get you all closer. Closer. I got to take the, the uh, SD cards out of here anyway because I have a ton of Earth footage on here. Yeah, so far, uh, it looks like a great first printer. Um, good, great manual flex plate, auto leveling, direct drive up to 300C is what they say. Um, it's on rails. It's not V-wheels. Some people love that. Some people hate it. Um, again, like you said, the the uh, the uh, direct drive and the auto leveling, um, the footprint. I love the footprint. It's not giant, and I like that a lot. Um, the newer printers are they're coming so big on the bases, and it's hard to you know get a good like table or enclosure if it's such a big base. Um, pull factor. What are we talking about? Yeah, yeah, the pull factor. Good. Just making sure I was looking at that, right? Um, it would be interesting in testing the SV06 out. Sweet. Nothing innovative about this printer, but it looks like a well printer with other features printers are missing. Absolutely. Um, I would have to say I don't know much about the hot end um, just because they said it's the, you know, they, they designed it. Um, but you're right. It looks like they took the features of printers that we like and that we see, um, put them together and, and made a printer. Now, the price on this currently, if you click on my link in the description, is like $239 for the price. I don't know if there's a better printer out there with everything you get. It's not linear rails, but some people like these better. You know, that's a toss-up. Um, also, there's a link for a giveaway. If you go down in the description, uh, click that giveaway link. You'll find um, a little code you want to put in as well. Um, that's in the description. Make sure you use my code get you entered in a giveaway. You could possibly win one, which is great. Sorry, I'm just taking the SD card out here. I got to remember what. Let's not erase that. That's all my Murph, that's all my Earth footage, I mean. <laughs> that would not be my favorite day if I accidentally erased that. All right, let's put the new battery in. Let me get you guys a hopefully get you guys a, a view here. Um that's my goal here. I want to get you down on that build plate, see what it looks like. Any questions? I know this this print might take a while. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it live the whole time. But um, is there any questions you guys have, uh, you know, while we're here, while we're talking? Um, oh, is this a dead battery? What? Oh. Making sure that's not on the cool. Yeah, yeah. No SD. I don't really care. Get my handy dandy booyah, grandma. Let's see. Did that work? It didn't. We will make sure it works. Okay. video i might be mad because i don't have an sd card in here very possible Nothing yet, huh? Yeah, I might have to put an SD card in. Too bad. All right, what else we got for questions? Let me get an SD card going in this thing. 
and noise level is not terrible. Um, it is, it's, I mean, primarily silent, I would say. There's definitely fan noise, but it's nothing like, you know, an Ender 3 or something like that. I mean, uh, I can try to get you closer with my mic. Give me one second. A mist has thermal runaway, assuming as it does. I hope so. I did not test that, but we could. I don't want to test it during this print, but I definitely will. Um, I believe it does. I hope it does <laughs> have thermal runaway on it. Okay. Come on, SD card. Uh, what's the average print speed for this machine? Seems as fast as my Ender 3 V2. I would assume it's very similar to that. Uh, let me look at what they say in the manual. May, it, I think May is with us. She could probably answer that better than, than I could answer because I don't know that off the top of my head, but I will get that information in a second here. I just want to get you guys close, so I'm trying to get my... You know, get a little SD card pumped in here. Oh, dummy. Put it in the right place here. Shows how often I use, like, the SD card on these um, GoPros. Very seldom. <laughs> like, super seldom. I usually just use them for, like, this stuff. All right. Um, X sign on the printer, 32-bit. Yeah, planetary extruder. It's rotating, all the civil self-developed, that's what they say. Yes, that's true. 80 millimeters, uh, to it's recommended to print 80 millimeters a second on the SVO6. That's not bad at all. What USB type? It's micro, um, oh, I'm sorry. It is, what is it, micro or mini? Yeah, it's one of those. <laughs> Give me a second. I'll, I get those two mixed up, micro and mini. Um, come on, do something. Yeah. Now, give us, give us camera. Or don't give us camera. Well, darn it. Oh, <laughs> what a genius I am. Hang on. This whole time, I'm saying give us camera. And I grabbed the wrong cable. I grabbed the... Uh... <laughs> I love it. Oh... Not prepared. I grabbed this stinking um, USB-C cable. There we go. Now we should have a camera. Yeah. Let me get this thing on a tripod. I'll get you guys a shot. Now that I'm not a genius anymore. Oh, again, plastic people. USB micro B. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably right. Micro looks like a burger bun. That is micro then, yes. I am. So, I'm like... I, you know, that's one thing that I always get confused about. Like, is it micro? Is it mini? I know USB-C, and I wish it, everything was USB-C now, but you know how that goes. It's not yet. Um, I don't know how I'm going to get you a good shot of this because it is like, it's so low. Um, but I'm going to try. I am going to try. That's what we're here to do. So tell me, no one updated the firmware today, but we did. Um, so that's good. We're in the new firmware. There you go. There's your shot. Not terrible. There's me. Now we're good. Boom. That's an old GoPro. It's a 7 Black. Um, Hero 7 Black. That's what that GoPro is. Um, I cannot lose this SD card. It says a lot of footage on here from Earth, and I do not want to lose that, along with this one. I'm going to take this one out, too. Um, I also have a Hero 8 Black. It's really not that old. Cut me some slack here, you know? 
Um, let's see. Should be normal, not type C. Yes, you're right. Um, grateful to get one at the 199 price. Can't wait for it to get here. Awesome. 199 price was is killer for this thing, man. 199 is great, but one uh, but 239 still very good. Got to say it. 239 for this printer still very good. Hey, look what I found. Um, I found my little uh, battery tester I was using at Earth. There we go. Hero Seven Black was 2019. Nice. Yeah, see, so it's not that bad. It's only four years, right? Whew. That's not terrible. I have a eight black as well. Both do what I need them to do. The reason why I like the seven black, full disclosure, uh, the reason why I like the seven black is because I can plug um, an adapter right into the side of the GoPro and give you video like this straight out of the GoPro. Now, I can do that on my 8, but I have to have the media kit. Um, or I got to have the side door open. Um, anyways, so, yeah, there's that. Okay, this thing's rocking and rolling. It's not printing terrible at all. It's actually printing very well so far. Um, I believe this is going to be like a torture test of some sort. I'm not sure. It, it, it looks like we are only 5.49%, and we got a long ways to go here, 5.52% or something like that, so it needs a long time. Um, yes, 8 needs the medium out, absolutely. So I don't I don't dig that because I just want to plug in and go. I didn't want to spend the extra money on the medium mod, but I have an 8 now, so maybe I'll have to get one anyway. Uh, hyper smooth stabilization, yes. Any questions? Any questions? So this is the Sobel SV06. It just released on Monday. You probably saw three or four different streams today. There's a few videos that went out. Um, there's a description in uh, the, I'm sorry, the link in the description below to use my affiliate code. I would really appreciate that. It doesn't cost you anything else, but it does help me out a little bit. Also, there's a giveaway code down there so use my code click that button sign up to win your own or a couple other things as well um this printer might be good for print farms they could be um 239 is currently what they're at until that price runs out um winter house have a great night so uh, i know may was with us and and she was answering questions so if you have any other questions for me or for may uh let let us know. Pretty solid. I like the build plate. I like. Um, so far, it looks so far it looks good. Uh, this is gonna run for a while. It looks like though. <laughs> if it's reliable, which it could be with rails and gate belts, very very possible. I do believe. If there's one thing I would say, I would like it. I would like to see it come with a little bit of, of grease. I don't think it came with any grease for the rails because um, I think that's an important thing to do. Um, a little bit of grease for, for the rails here. So if we're looking at the rails here and here and, and of course, across here um, and on your Y as well, there's two rails across the Y. That's something to point out. There is two rails, not a single rail, so that's good. Um but I would like to see some grease come with this so you could, you know, grease this up a little bit. Um, good giveaways, yes. I pass the info along via email. Uh, email list I have for 3D printers. Rover, thank you. I'm not sure, not sure what that means, but thank you. You missed May answer to the SS file. It's a stress test file, not supposed to be on the card. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. Well, we're doing it anyway, I guess. Um, stress test, stress test. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I said, so far so good. I'll probably load up their slicer just to print some stuff and, and get ideas on how to, you know, build a Prusa slicer profile. And, uh, I don't think it says in the manual, you know, all the settings. 
Oh, there's an actual, there's a screen menu information. Um, I got to say, this is the best manual I've seen in a minute. So in here, let's see if you can see this. It's kind of hard to see. There's a, a full menu here, a full page on what each menu has. Um, prepare goes across. Bed leveling goes across. Configuration and every menu underneath each one. I like that a lot. That is great. Um, I don't like the big wheel look on the extruder. It looks Victorian. Some people love that, and some people hate it. It looks like. Um, not gonna lie, some people. Someone was just saying they love that. There we go. So it's printing really good. Here's the picture of that. Um, so you can kind of see that. There you go. The giveaway emailed out. Awesome. I don't like the big... So I have a code. I have a special code in the description of this video uh, to put in when your giveaway goes, when you click that link for the giveaway. I think uh, bearings on the spool roller could help isolate rocking from the extruder. Rocking makes me think it uh, could cause ripples. It's definitely possible. I know what you're saying. Um, you're talking about up here uh, where the spool is kind of going back and forth. It's, that could help. Um, it's one thing I wish more printers has is specs for setting up new printers secure, yeah, in Cure listed in the manuals. Um, Nier pointed out how good the manual was in the first he'd seen uh, that debugging tree. Absolutely. I, I mean, I haven't watched anybody's streams or videos on this, but kudos, Sovel. Great job on the manual. Uh, I'm talking like like, great job on the menu. Um, very, very good. That That is how you do manuals. Creality, everyone else out watching, follow, follow this because we need to see more of this, especially for brand new people. Um, we need to see more of that. Again, I haven't watched any, any, any other videos. Now, tomorrow, I'll probably watch everybody's videos. Maybe not all the live streams because I don't have time. But, yeah. Uh, the nut is really useful. It makes it easier to find the feed the filament manually. Just insert the filament, rotate until it's good. Um, and it shows the station of the motor. Yeah, I, I, I like it. He's talking about this here. So you, that you can actually turn that with your hand and extrude. Um, or, and you can kind of see how it's pulling too. So currently it's just pulling 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 when it retracts it spins the other way or it slows down awesome i like it and so like the personal aesthetic you know you, you could actually probably just um replace it with something different or take it off if you really wanted to i'm assuming it's just plastic so it might pull off you could probably put something else on there maybe a big googly eye huh yeah a big googly eye that like spins around that, that would be amazing that would be hilarious by the way um, okay, last call, last call for questions, uh, on this. We've been an hour and 45, um, and I don't, I don't think I need to go that much longer. Um, it's ripe for a 3d printing cover plate for sure. <laughs> um, definitely. I, I think it needs a screen. Uh, cover on the back, so someone will probably hook, hook that up. A big googly eye would be perfect. That would be hilarious. I would love to see that. Um, I think someone needs to either make uh, or they, they will. They'll model a screen cover for the back. Absolutely. I don't like that you can touch the back of the screen, uh, but that's a lot of the printers, so... And that's kind of fun of modding. You can make it any color you want. Um, this one's kind of interesting because it's all blue, so you may want to stick with the blue or go black. Or white or whatever color you want. It doesn't matter. Does it go good with Oreos? Absolutely. It even heats them up on the build plate, which is great. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So, like I said, there's a giveaway. There's a link in the description. Click that link. I have a code in the description. Use my code. Sign up if you haven't already done or sign up with my code if you have. Do it. What's the noise of the printer? Uh, let, me, let me take my lab off here and let me get you up in there. You ready? I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a little. So
So I don't know if that helped or not. <laughs> it's not loud. It's not loud. I could. I have a DB. I have a decimal meter on my phone. We could probably do that too. This is probably worse. I'm trying to listen to this while I put this back on my shirt. Um, there we go. Good enough. Good enough. If you really want to know, I can do a decimal meter. Um, I'm pretty sure I have a sound meter here. And we can, you know, do an unofficial official. The thing is, like, where, where, you know, is it right here? Is it over here? Is it around here? Is it up top? It can be different in all those places, right? But uh, it's not loud. The, the loudest thing is a fan, I hear. And that fan is the hot end fan. I can, I can hear it. Um, that's the loudest fan I got on this. So it's not bad. Not bad at all. Once again, uh, last last call for questions, comments, anything you want me to check, anything like that. I'm trying to find my uh, sound meter here. Is this it? Yeah, sure. Okay. I'm going to go right here. It's not going to help me. I want to know why it's not going to help me? Because that's the wrong one. <laughs> I'm like, what am I doing? That is a, um, it's a spectroid. It, it goes across all the frequencies. I used to use that when I was in my um, DJing days to find feedback sometimes. Best SVO6 on stream today, Jim. Thank you very much. Off to bed for me. Have a great night. Thank you very much for the compliment. Have a great night uh, or or day, like you said. Um, uh, Despo meter. I'm going to do this. We're going to find out. A sound meter, a decibel meter. That right there is a decibel meter. All right, here we go. Uh, what kind of music uh, did you play as a DJ? All kinds of music. Everything from karaoke to weddings and all the music that would come with that. I played it all. Whatever, whoever hired me wanted. All right, here we go. Um, I'm just going to toss it right here. I don't know if you can see this. Not really. Oh, I know. I got this other camera. Boom. Boom. You ready for this? And drop it right up in there. Oh, it just hit it. Not bad at all. So, yeah, what would we get around there? Um, yeah, yeah, I can show the product page. Sure, we can do that quick. I'd say around 50. It's not terrible, pretty solid. I mean, literally, it's just the sound of the fans that's making a lot of the noise. Some a little bit of stepper noise, but not much. Not much at all. Okay. Uh, let's jump on. Um, let's jump on the screen of the product page to show the overall features. Let's do it. Uh, let me just grab that and then I can share my stuff here. And then we're going to call it a day. Sounds quiet. Yeah, it's not bad. Like I said, around, I was a DJ in the 70s, 80s. Awesome. Have a good night. Um, let's see. Sovol SVO4, SVO1, pre order. There it is. I'm going to move some screens around so I can share them. Boom. Get my. 
chat going over here. There we go. All right. There's the early bird price right now of 239. And I'm about to share the screen real quick here. Maybe. What is going on? There we go. All right. Boom. Boom. Just had to get sharing ready. Share the screen. Boom. Share. Keep going on your questions. A fan on the SPL6 is more silent. 32-bit mainboard, noticeably more silent than other syllable questions. I absolutely agree. Definitely more silent than uh, than some of the other syllables I've tried, but they've all been very good. So here's the pre-order. Currently, it's at 239. Um, that's to the U.S. 239 U.S. dollars. It's going to be it looks like 299 when it goes off of the pre-order when these are running out. So I believe there's a limited amount make and let us know in the chat how many there was at 239 um there's oh right here 500 units i apologize it's right on the screen in front of me there we go so if we're looking at some of the features here um there was a 200 units sold out right away at 200 dollars uh here is the shipping time so 201 through 500 units are looking at around november 25th for shipping. The first ones will be around the 20th of November. Um, the first 29 units will be shipped on the 25th of October. Awesome. So then we'll scroll down a little bit. Here's the release. Planetary direct drive extruder. It's all metal. Has auto leveling and a PEI flexi plate. There we go. It's a direct drive extruder and it kind of shows you the... Um, printer there here we go here's the close-up looks of how the extruder works it's a planetary direct drive it's all metal setup in the huts and then some bi-metal heat break is what they told us it's got the auto bed leveling it's no it's a no touch uh, like an inductive style kind of like uh, easy abl would be um it does have the flex plate the 32-bit silent main board I don't know what drivers are on this. I did not open it up. Um, auto X access leveling, which is great. That means it'll go to the top. It'll hit the top on both sides and kind of grind a little. That way it, this is straight and, and flush or, or level, I guess, um, every time. Uh, and this is kind of dual Z access. It does have dual Z with motors, a belt tensioner right in the front. I didn't check my belts. I usually do, but I forgot. It has resumed printing on power outage. Um, here's a little more about the direct drive planetary extruder. So kind of shows, sorry about that rewards thing, kind of show how is it, how it works. Um, it has a planetary gear set. So it has a higher drive ratio and a lighter motor. There you go. And that's kind of what it looks like underneath. There's a, uh, that's a fan, it looks like, down here. Let's see. Uh, all metal. There you go. It is a, a bimetal um, heat break here. It's obviously, no PTFE if it's all metal, so that'll come all the way through. Just remember, your retraction needs to be set. It does warn you in the metal... It does warn you in the manual and on the uh, stuff here. Kind of gives you an overview of what you can print. TPU, PLA, PETG, ABS, P polycarbonate, ASA, nylon, carbon, fiber, and wood filaments. Remember, some of those abrasive stuff may eat your nozzle faster, so have some extra nozzles. Um, is it a NEMA 14 uh, extruder motor? That is a great question. May might know that answer. I'm not sure. Uses an inductive sensor to uh, level. 
um, the metal print bed with 25 points automatically. It's actually pretty fast when it does that. We saw that earlier. It compensates, compensates the unevenness of the heated bed. Uh, just a quick heads up. There are no, there are no, let me say that one more time. There's no, 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 no wheels underneath for you to turn, which is great. It's just solid mounted and rock and rolls. Um, so it kind of shows you how it does that here. Flexi build plate. There you go. PEI coated uh, flexible build plate. We love those when they cool down. Everything just pops right off of them. 32 bit silent port. There you go. 2209 drivers. That's what they're saying. Uh, more modification be done. Easily advanced users. There you go. Uh, G34 Auto Z line, which is awesome. Um, that way you can level your X axis. All you got to do is click it. It goes up, done, death to V slot. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right, Hack Monkey, how you doing, man? One of the better looking MK3 clones around. Don't care for the light blue, but concerned about cooling fan intake facing the bed. Hmm, interesting. Um, what else do we got here? There you go. There's the auto seal line, and it just it goes up, hits the top, aligns everything, and then your x axis is straight. The build volume they call 220 by 220 by 250. Uh, I probably would say you could probably get 235 by 235 by 250, but the official build volume 220 by 220 by 250. Um, Dual Z and their Dual Z motors. Excuse me. Like I said, Dual Z and Dual Z motors, which is awesome. There's belt tensioners on the axes. There's knobs in the front and on the side. Resume printing. I know somebody asked me a couple times about thermal runaway, and I haven't tested that yet. But I'm, I, I'm hoping, and I would assume it's on there, but again, have not tested thermal runaway. Um, and then you have your uh, basically all your stuff here, package size, your voltage, all the good stuff. Um, we talked about earlier the size of, we talked about um, the size of the printer itself. And I would say roughly nine, I think it, what was it? 19 and a half by 15 and a half by, um, I can measure with the spool because that would be more accurate. But I think it was two feet without the spool. Um, and that's just like real life use. That is giving yourself a little strain relief in the back. And also, um, you know, with the strain relief in the back, you, you got to have that. You don't want it to be smashing up the back against your enclosure, messing up these wires back here. There is strain relief, but every time you, it's hitting something, that's bad. Um, but I'm, I'm curious what it is with the spool here. It was two feet without the spool let's call it 27 inches yeah that's fair 27 it's probably a little see if i can get in there a little tighter oh man 26 and a half 26 and a half tall with this specific spool so 27 inches probably is fair um if you're going to keep this enclosed with a spool on the top just turn the fan off for more layers and in increase the ramp. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, absolutely on no V-slot. Let's see what we're doing here. Stray bits or jams. Oh, I see what you're saying with the fan underneath like that. Um, it cools as it goes up. Might be good to blow a little warm on early layers to reduce warping. I'm not sure. That's a good question. Um, at the edge of tech, does a screen cable have enough length to move the screen to the front of the printer? Um, probably. It's ran around. I can see it. It's run around the inside. I, I can show you this, actually. I have a GoPro here. You can see the cable right here. It's run around the inside. Down in there, it's a ribbon cable. Um, down in here. You can kind of see it shining right here. So that runs around the inside of the machine. And then goes out the side. There is some extra over there um, right here. 
it's kind of hard to see, but there's some extra. So I wouldn't, I would say this, if you wanted to move it to the very front of the machine, you probably could, but the build plate might hit it. Um, but it is possible. It is possible. Maybe move it up front here or something like that. Um, I could see some modifications. People are, people are, their gears are turning, right? I mean, awesome. Let me, let me jump back here. You can see that print so far. It's going very well. Yeah, looks really good. I don't, I mean, it's a, it's a, uh, from what I'm told, this is a torture print. <laughs> Does this screen make my base look big? Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. So we're only 14 and a half percent into this print. So it's got quite a bit to go. Um, I think we're going to, I think we're going to call it. So uh, hardened, oh, let's see, stainless or hardened. I have no idea. I had to guess they're stainless steel rods, but May might, uh, if she's still on with us, she could probably answer. Are the, are the rods here, are they stainless steel or hardened? Good question. Um, is, is it using skinned Kira? Yes, it is. I did not load it yet, but it does do that. It would reduce the width of the printer in the front. Yeah, it definitely would. Um, it would, well, you got to remember this. This here still has to stick out a little bit, right? So right now with your power cable in, it's about the same uh, as the front of your monitor. I'm sorry, your front of your screen um, assembly there. If you found a right angle power cable, you could save maybe two inches. I'd call it two inches to be safe. You still have a, a rod up here for your tensioner. Um, so you could probably save yourself two inches with a right angle power cord and yeah. Um, all right. There's a well done at Sobel. You appear to have the new benchmark for the price tier. I would say, um, you know, I'm thinking for the enclosure. Yeah, for sure. I would say, you know what, for, for two thirty nine, first impressions, this is not a review. I haven't put 100 hours or more of print on it, all that stuff. But first impressions, out of the box. It's super easy to assemble. Make sure you put the uh, gantry on forward. Um, stepper facers, or stepper motors facing forward, not backward like, like normal. Um, super easy to assemble. I'd say 15 minutes tops. Tops, if you're not talking like me. Um, also, uh, you know, it has... Um, let's see. It has the the inductive leveling, which is great. Uh, the the Z height adjust that you set. Um, it does the automatic Z or or X axis leveling, where it comes up, runs it against the top, and and levels everything, which is awesome. Um, flex plate, direct drive, hardened uh, bimetal steel throat. Um, man. It's quiet. I, mean, I think we got like an average of 50 decibels right around there. So that, I mean, it's pretty quiet. Now I'm used to the bamboo X1 carbons and they are not quiet. The opposite of this, <laughs> they're super loud. Um, so this thing is actually really quiet, really quiet. Um, yeah. I mean, belt tensioner, man, you, it, this thing really ha checks a lot of the boxes. Um, I'll give you one of these one more time. Proofs are first released MK3 with a stainless and quicker recalled them to swap with hardened uh, due to scratching. They were scratched. I recently saw a vendor start stating they were using stainless. Got it. Um, you ought to treat it pretty much like an MK3. I, I would agree. I would agree. Uh, I would like to see uh, anything quieter than my old printer bot. Yes. I would like to see myself. I would like to see some uh, lubricant or grease. For your rails, um, I think that would be a good thing to do right out of the box. I know there's some on there. There's a little bit on there. I can see it. I can see where everything stops. You don't want to over grease them by any means. You don't want to mess. You don't want dust and everything collecting on that. But at least give us something, a little bit, so we can maintain it, right? Uh, yes, you can adjust the first layer height from the control knob um, right out of the box. So there is a Z offset control right out of the box. Um, leveling was fast. Um, 
man, I think, you know what? It's pretty, pretty solid. I think, I think we're going to call it a little over two hours. It doesn't have to be longer than this. Um, I printed apparently a, a, a stress test for the first thing and it's pretty going pretty long. So I'm going to set a camera up here. Um, I'm going to watch this thing. I'll probably throw my fireball over here just in case it gets squirrely or something, but uh, I'll let this thing go. And, and tomorrow when it's done, um, I'll take a picture and I'll toss it out there on the social medias of what the torture test or maybe a quick video or something on what it actually printed because it appears to be something that's going to take quite a bit. It's only 16% done. We've been going for 45 minutes, 45 minutes. Um, baby stepping on Z. Yes, you can control the Z offset from the home screen while it's running. Yes, you can technically baby step it. Um, yeah. You're right. Um, it, it's it's a feature that few people or few uh, Marlin, I'm sorry, few manufacturers bother to turn on. I think the good ones do, and it needs to be in there. It needs to be in there. Um, I did a printer recently that did not have it on straight out of the box. There could have been a firmware update. That's fine, um, but it should have had it on there. I but anyways, uh, I think we're good. I, I think first impressions two thirty nine. Phenomenal price um, for a first-time printer. I think this will be a great start. It literally ticks every box that I updated on my Ender 3 and my original. Uh, from the flex plate to auto bed leveling to dual Z. I put dual Z on my original, if you remember, a long time ago. Uh, I mean, like, everything comes on this thing uh, right out of the box for $239. It's solid. I can't. I can't say like I can't say like this is a review. Go spend your money because I haven't printed with it enough to know that. I haven't printed something the full build height stuff like that. But first impressions and first look, this is solid and definitely worth looking into. Definitely worth researching. And if you're gonna buy it, check out my uh, link in the description. It'll help me a little bit on that. Um. <laughs> um hi, Sherry. Heidi is here. Awesome. Hi, Heidi. We're just about to shut it down. So, but everybody else, thank you so much for, for showing up uh, last couple hours. Like I said, so far, so good. I'll post tomorrow what it actually prints and whatever it prints, we'll see how it looks. Um, but we have quite a bit here. Like I said, it's at 17% now and we're at 47 minutes. So it's going to be a little while. Um, <laughs> hi, that's awesome. And yeah, Solid printer. Check it out. Use my affiliate. Uh, I would highly appreciate it if you did. If you are going to order it, if you don't, that's okay too. And also don't forget to use my code below and register to win. Jump in that contest. There's a code in the description below and uh, use my code when you register. That helps out uh, everybody. I think it helps them track everything too. Um, cheers, man. Have a great night. Yes, you too. Everybody out there, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. We will see you Saturday at noon, uh, noon central. We are going to bust out a laser uh, or tour Laser Master 3. We're going to do another live stream uh, Saturday at noon. So we'll see you then. Um, have a great night, a great day, wherever you are from. Uh, thank you so much, Solval, for being here. Uh, May and, and uh, Heidi is here as well. Um, so thank you guys so much for being here. I really appreciate it, everybody watching. And any questions, shoot them in the video below, and we'll do our best to answer them. If you have any questions, you always can chat me. But hit the um, uh, comments in the video when the video is posted, and I'll make sure to watch that for a while and, and get those get those uh, answers. Questions? questions answered, not qu answers questions. So have a great night, everybody. We'll see you later. Bye. Should I stay or should I go now? <laughs> Bye, guys. Have a great night.